On this week's episode of Whitetail Cribs, we're headed to the Allegheny Mountains to visit with Steve Shirk. Steve shows us his family's hunting camp that was established in the 1970s and shares some of the most memorable stories and hunts from the last 50 years. Get ready to check out an entire hunting cabin stacked with all public land bucks. Be sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more videos. The Exodus team is traveling around the United States to take a look inside the trophy rooms of some of the most interesting whitetail hunters in the country. From giant bucks, unique racks, and riveting stories, welcome to Whitetail Cribs. How we doing? I'm Steve Shirk and welcome to the Shirk Family Deer Camp. Now everything you see here is Pennsylvania and New York public land deer. So over here is where we eat. This is our kitchen. And every year on the opening day of PA deer season, we always have uh, sausage gravy biscuits in the morning and chili at night. So by Tuesday morning, there's usually a line back to the door uh, going to the bathroom. So there's usually 15, 20 of us guys here, and uh, it's been an awesome tradition since uh, in the 1970s we've been coming here. So over here is the only deer we have in here that's not from Pennsylvania. This is my grandpa's mule deer. If I remember right, I believe it was shot somewhere in the 1990s. I think it has a 21 or 22 inch spread. We never got it scored, but uh, for for him it was it was a giant deer. I don't know much about mule deer, but for to any of us, it's it's a pretty pretty special piece we have uh, in between all these other deer that we got here. So this this buck we have up here is is my grandpa's uh, eight point. He shot in I think it says on here 1990, and uh, he actually shot it through this tree here so the next day or wasn't that long after that he uh, went back in and had to cut the tree down just because he thought it was such a such a remarkable shot shooting through the tree and that was just with a, a 6mm uh, caliber rifle so uh, you'd think it maybe it was a 300 ultra mag or something but just that little 6mm went through that tree and killed that 8 point over there and Unfortunately, my grandpa's not here with us anymore, but uh, we'd never uh, take down any of his trophies. But out of anything that's here, this is one of the more special pieces we have because it's uh, a bear that he had hunted. Not that specific bear, but he hunted 30 to 40 years to try to get a PA black bear. And uh, as he got older, it was getting harder and harder for him to, to hunt. And I don't think he ever thought he'd get one, but it, during his last few good years of bear hunting, he was able to take that bear, and it was, it was not only special for him, but it meant it meant so much to all of us here at camp just to know that he finally accomplished his Pennsylvania black bear. All right. So, anyways, uh, if you look on the wall here, you can see I spend a ton of time in the woods. Uh, I actually run. Uh, a guide service here in northern Pennsylvania. It's called Shirk's Guide Service. You can find us on Instagram or Facebook or at shirksguideservice.com. But anyways, uh, this is kind of just a result of uh, a lot of a lot of shed hunting just mainly throughout the past few years is when I've really been getting serious. Probably got 60 to 70 days of shed hunting in this year. Uh, found 40 plus antlers so far here in the big woods in northern PA. But uh, We've come up with a pretty cool way to 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 show our sheds. We just ran uh, three sixteenths galvanized cable through some bigger uh, stainless steel hooks, and then we just put a little brass hook on the base. And I think it turned out pretty good. We're planning on hopefully throughout the years we'll be able to put them all over the wall all the way around. But at least this year we were able to put a hundred some sheds just on the 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 one side of the wall here. So over here we got this would be. I think it was second or third shed I found this year was the most important shed that I was looking for, a buck I call Crazy 12. He'll probably be my number one hitless buck this year. It scored around 70 inches, should have put him close to that 160 mark 
uh, I found it in early January actually so I thought I'd find his other side pretty easily and now it's late May and I'm still looking my chances aren't as aren't as good this late but just really looking forward to seeing what this deer turns into this year he was five years old I believe uh, last season when he dropped so going into his sixth year I think he's got a lot of potential he's just possibly going to be who knows 170 180 we'll see but uh it's definitely a deer that I'm going to spend a lot of time hunting and my clients and just we're just hoping for once uh, we can get an opportunity at him this was just one of his sheds from the year before I think if I remember right I can't remember what it measured but the year before I think I guessed he was probably around 140 so going in just goes to show when they get older and you give them time, you can probably see the difference, how much he grew from one year to the next. But it's always a lot of fun when you can stay on a deer and uh, keep collecting his sheds from year to year. This shed here is another special one because this is from a deer, probably even some of you have heard of if you know me, that I've named Goliath. Unfortunately, he's not alive anymore. I never did get a chance on him. Uh, another lucky hunter from Pennsylvania was able to bag him this year, but found Goliath in 2016. And this was his shed from that year. I know he was somewhere in the, guessing he was in the 150s that year, just providing that uh, his other side was about the same as this one. But Goliath, uh, I probably lost a lot of sleep over him. Uh, many different nights and uh, it was 2017 he disappeared on me I didn't really know much about the deer then either but then I was able to get back on him in 2018 and uh, after that season uh, even more so it was a huge accomplishment that I was able to get his sheds this isn't him obviously that you know that I that I killed or I, I just ended up having his sheds mounted uh, they came to a total of 164 gross inches and uh, this year I I don't know what he ended up scoring when he got harvested this past fall in 2019 it's supposedly somewhere in the high 160s but out of any deer that I've ever had history with it's probably Goliath ranks at the top and uh, it would take a lot for someone especially me to mount a set of sheds but with all the history and time and hours that I've put into hunting them and scouting them. Uh, it was just a miracle uh, even finding the sheds. Uh, I ended up finding them seven miles from where I had pictures of them all summer. So it's just always going to be a special deer that means a lot to me. And even though I didn't kill him, it's just a really special deer and uh, uh, I'll never forget him. That's for sure. All right, so now that we're, uh, we've kind of gone over some of the sheds we have in here, uh, I'd like to talk uh, over here about my Uncle Gordon's deer, so just follow me. This deer is a really special deer. I had named him Skyscraper a few years before my uncle shot him. He hunted two days in Pennsylvania in the first two days of gun season without even seeing a deer. And then uh, we were sitting back at camp that night and he wasn't frustrated by any means, but I just kind of wanted to point him in the right direction. And I, I, I had a decent idea where this buck was living. So I, uh, I just said, hey, go to this particular spot, and uh, if you put your time in there, I think you might get an opportunity at him, and I wasn't expecting it to be that day. Anyways, that day, he sat there, I'm sure he got in there, you know, well before daylight, and it was the third day of the gun season, and it was close to dark, still hadn't seen a deer, but he grounded out all day, and uh, right before dark, skyscraper came by, and uh, it was... What, probably the best day he's ever had in the deer woods. I know it's his biggest deer. It's the biggest deer that uh, anyone from our camp has ever taken. It just goes to show if you put your time in and you have patience and you hunt hard, this is what can happen. And Pennsylvania's getting better and better. So I encourage anyone, if you put your time in, this can be the result. So this deer here is my cousin Gary's deer. And there's kind of a cool story with that one. And it was the night before the season and Gary and I were talking and I just remember him saying, man, I, I just wish there was some way I could make it happen tomorrow on a nice buck. And I reached in my pocket and I said, Gary, here's my lucky quarter. And sure enough, uh, I was sitting here at camp waiting for Gary to come in that night. And I look in the back of the truck and I see this monster. 
And to this day, I haven't got that quarterback. So, Gary, if you're watching, it's time to pass that back to me. I shot this deer past this past season and last archery season. That was somewhere, if I remember right, in the high 120s as well. That high 120 mark seems to be what Pennsylvania is offering these days. A lot of a lot of bucks mid to high 120s. So this deer here, I shot as well, 2017. I actually remember the day. It was October 18th. We had a huge cold front. If you're if you're someone that follows the weather or believes that weather impacts deer movement, I can promise you that this is a result of getting out there on those days when we have those cold fronts. I wasn't in the stand more than an hour, but the wind was probably blowing 20, 30 miles an hour. I was way on top of a ridge. It was actually spitting snow, and sure enough, he came by, offered me like a 15-yard shot, and uh, I learned a lot about cold fronts that day. This deer here, shot that deer in 2017. That was a New York deer, which we're, our camp is only a mile or two from New York. I shot that on opening day of gun season. I sat in the stand all day in like 40 degree cold rain. It literally never let up on me. It was probably even about 4.30 p.m. right before dark. I saw him chasing some does and uh, I made about 120 yard spine shot on him and I dropped him. And it wasn't until I got up to him, I realized, oh boy, now I got my work cut out for me. I had about a two mile drag and I looked on my phone and I was like, oh, thank God I got cell signal. So I called the guys at the camp. I, I don't think I would have made it out of there that night alive, but it was a, probably about six, six or seven o'clock. I can't quite remember, but uh, I saw some flashlights coming through the woods after my flashlight died. So I didn't even have a flashlight and I'm dragging that thing through the woods. So uh, those guys bailed me out. I think I still owe them. I don't think I'll ever repay them back for that one. But uh, shot that deer in 2016, I believe. Shot it with a bow. Kind of a special deer too. It's the biggest body deer I've ever shot. It ended up dressing at 215 pounds. I kind of call him the redeemer buck because two days before that, I shot at probably the biggest buck I've ever gotten an opportunity at and didn't get it. I mean, I know he's a really nice buck and uh, I would never pass it up, but I still kind of wish I would have got that other one. I shot it out of the same stand that I hit the big one out of. I, so it just goes to show that uh, you can keep hunting the same stand as long as it's hot. So this deer here is uh, one my grandfather shot in 1987. Prior to 2003, there were only two, uh, two bucks we had on the wall at camp here. Now I think we got close to 20. So all that's been because of the antler restrictions. I, I can't emphasize enough on how the antler restrictions, at least in this part of Pennsylvania, have created such a uh, trophy buck environment for us. I know it meant a lot to my grandfather and uh, it, it's the first buck that ever made the camp wall. So it's pretty cool. I shot this buck here. It was it was actually believed to be seven and a half years old. It's not the biggest rack, but it was a really old deer. Um, I shot it the last day in New York gun season. It was, again, I, I don't think I ever got to weigh it, but it was one of the more bigger body deer I ever shot. But when you shoot one on the last day, literally this was the last few hours left, uh, it really means something because just when you think your season's about to end and you get something like that, it really... Uh, it really makes it more special. This deer here I shot a few years ago, also in New York. So obviously goes to show here in New York, we have some nice deer as well, or just across the border here in New York. I shot that on opening day of gun season. It's not the biggest frame buck. I remember it scoring, it was actually like 127. I shot that on opening day. Anymore though, I, I can't say that's what my standards are for New York. I still am a, more of a bigger fan of trophy hunting in PA, but I guess I've just been blessed uh, with uh, some really nice bucks in New York as well. This one here is my cousin Matt's deer, shot in 2002. This was the second, second real big buck we ever had to camp. We're never definitely gonna forget about that deer. And it kind of just started, because uh, it just seemed like right after that, then the antler restrictions came and it just kind of got the ball rolling for uh, the big bucks here in uh, Pennsylvania. Down here, uh, both of these right here, my Uncle Gary's deer, uh, he's had a real good past couple of years in archery season. They're both PA archery bucks. I know they're both around the 130 mark. I shot this one behind the camp, so uh, I guess that, that was a time when I even rarely go behind the camp. That deer there was another cold front buck. Uh, 
just kind of lured me more to hunting during those cold fronts. I, I, uh, I think it was, if I remember right, mid to late October, I was hunting a scrape and I uh, did some grunting. He came in, presented me like a 25 yard shot. Now, this was one of those situations where I gave him all night and uh, I know some people might disagree about it, but uh, I let the deer sit all night and it actually somewhat backfired on me as far as getting any meat out of them. Uh, found them the next morning, literally about a mile away. And uh, I didn't push them or anything the night before. I think the coyotes had been bumping them all night. But I uh, found them like a mile away and pretty much what you see is all that was left of them. Uh, but, you know, I still don't regret leaving a deer overnight. Uh, if I would have pushed him that night because it was a marginal hit, I probably would have never found him. Over here, uh, this was my dad's 11 point he shot last season. Uh, we're pretty proud of that deer. He shot at middle of the first week of gun season. My dad's almost 70 years old now. He drug that thing on his own, almost close to a two mile drag. So. We're thankful he at least came back to camp alive that day. That was a pretty cool buck. Uh, it's just, I think it might be the only 11 point ever brought to camp too. Uh, and up here, several years ago, those were some sheds my dad found. It was one of his nicer matching sets. So for his birthday, bought that skull and had them mounted onto, onto that camo skull. That's another cool way to do something if you find a nice matching set of sheds. And I shot this buck a few years ago in archery season. That was kind of a cool story too. I rarely shoot a buck while I'm guiding. And uh, I remember my client said that day, hey Steve, you know, we just want you to bring your bow along with us. Uh, we'd just like to be happy just as much to see you get one. So I felt, I felt a little guilty or I don't know really know how to explain the feeling, but I brought my bow with me and I uh, got the guys in their stands and I just was sitting there on a log and uh, Sure enough, I hadn't sat there more than a half hour, and that guy came walking by, and uh, I wasn't going to let him go. So uh, that was kind of a pretty cool buck, the only buck I really ever shot while I'm guiding. Okay, lastly, uh, this is a pretty special buck uh, my cousin Mike shot. He was just 12 years old. We actually got a picture of him right here. And now he looks like he's about 80 pounds in that picture. If, if you know Mike, Mike's like one of the biggest guys at camp. He was like my little brother. I used to pick on him. Well, I definitely would never pick on him now because he'd, he'd definitely make me uh, regret doing that. But uh, it's pretty cool because that was his first buck ever, which is a, a beautiful Pennsylvania buck, beautiful nine point. And I don't think he's shot one that nice since. But uh, we were just super proud to see Mike, uh, his first buck, get a deer that nice and uh, hopefully he gets one nicer someday, but for your first buck in Pennsylvania, it doesn't get much better than that. So anyways, this is the camp, this is our story. Uh, I just know one thing, I spend a lot of time in the woods and I got cameras to check, sheds to find, so appreciate you guys coming. Uh, love, to, love to have you again, but we got work to do this season. Thanks a lot for having us.